Okay, welcome back guys to another video to boy Sam. Hope you all are doing great. And in this video right here, we're going to create a screen recorder with Python. If you're used to OBS or used to Camtasia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We'll be able to do all that with Python, save the recordings and actually export them and actually use them for videos like YouTube, Instagram or whatever you want to use them for. Now, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video guys, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I know what, let's get started. Now, the first thing you need to do for sure is you need to open PyCharm or open your ID. And when you've done that, you need to create a new project. I've already created a new project, but if you don't have a new project, create a new project. And after that, we will create our Python file. So you just click on your new project folder, click on new and Python file. Now we're going to call this main. You can see we have our main.py. Now that we have that, we need to download the modules that will make this whole process possible. And yeah, guys, I'm going to leave down in the description below all the module. You can get them in the link. And that link, when you click on it, you just copy the modules and you paste them on your terminal right here. You copy them, you paste them right here, and then you'll have everything installed. So the first module we need to install is pillow. Now for pillow, we just click right here and you can see it says pip install pillow. You click enter. You can see it's been successfully installed. After that, we need to install NumPy. Now you do the same thing, you just paste it right here, pip install numpy. Now we can see that numpy has been installed correctly. What we need to install next is OpenCV. Now we click pip install opencv-python, click enter for that, and we can see it's been successfully installed. The next one is Win32 API. Now we copy it. Yeah, so you, you see the link for all this. You just paste it. You can see pip install pywin32. And now we press enter. Now we can see it's been successfully installed. And the last one we're going to install is date time. So I just see pip install date time. We click, I click enter for sure. And now you can see that everything is installing. It's been successfully installed and that's all. I know it was a little bit, a lot, but yeah, what we're doing is actually, we need all these modules and it's completely worth it when you actually have the final product. So you know what, let's get started.
and after installing we know for sure we have to import modules so I just put in a comment and say import modules and the module will first import will import date time after that we'll import pillow but it's short for PI PIL import PIL no we we'll say from PIL import image grab The image grab is a capital I. Yeah, so image grab right here. And I'll just put a comment there so we actually know why we're doing this. This is basically to grab the image. So this module is for grabbing image. So that's why we're having it there. Now we import NumPy as MP as NP NumPy as NP mm -hmm. and after that the next module we'll get is OpenCV so we'll just import CV2 and finally we're going to use Win32 API as we want to get the system metric info and what is this system metric info later you see that we actually need to get the dimension dy dynamically of every screen size that is actually using this python project so if your computer has a bigger screen we need to be able to get that screen size dynamically so that's why we're using this win32 api so winter i'll just put a comment in there want to get system metrics info so that's why we're using it so we'll say from win32 api import get system metrics so now we've imported everything we'll need for this amazing project now what we need to do next is we need to be able to capture the screen and then after we'll do the settings for recording the screen now to capture it we'll need to use a while loop and we'll say while true so that means this will run whenever it's true so what we need to do right here is we need to create an image variable with boundary box parameters the, day, the way we do that, we create a variable as we said, it's called image, and then we'll say image grab dot grab. And what we're going to do is we'll say bb box, this is our boundary box parameter. We'll set it to zero, zero, and then we need to actually put the width. Now we could guess a width, but the way I want us to do it is I want us to dynamically get the width of our screen size. So the way we'll do that, we'll use the Win32 API. And this is how we we'll do it. So we'll say width is equal to get system metrics. And then we'll put zero there because zero is for the width. And for the height, we'll do the same thing. We'll say get system metrics and we'll put one instead. So zero is for the width, one is for the height. So now if I actually print if you don't know your screen size, this is a nice way to do it. If I print width and height and we run it right here. We get errors, but you can see we get the metrics for our screen size right here. So now we have the screen sizes. So now right here, we can just put it dynamically like this. Let's say width. Yeah, so we put width and height. Now after this, what we need to do is we need to convert this image to a NumPy array. And this is very easy. So just look say image dot mp image slash mp is equal to mp dot 
array and inside here we'll put our image so now we've converted it to an array a numpy array now look what we need to do right here is we need to call opencv to actually show the image so we say cv2 dot i am show and right here we'll put the name i'm gonna say not obs that's our that's the name of our screen capture you can call it whatever you want and then we'll say image mp what we need to do here is we need to give four characters for the video file encoding and decoding and the way we do this we declare a variable i'll call it for char and we set that equal to cv2 dot video writer video writer underscore four cc and the four cc's are going to be the four characters are and the four characters are m p four and v now these are the four characters and now we need to be able to stop the recording we say if cv2 dot wait key and that's 10 is equal to ord and then the letter q because that's what we're used to quit we're going to break now let's actually run it and see what happens we can see right here now we have our screen recorder it's not recording right now it's just capturing so we can see it's capturing if i go to here you can see that our screen recorder is recording this and you can see the difference there's we need to add some color we need to change it to rgb color but we can see that it's actually recording right now and yeah you can click right here google you see it's recording google so everything is working it's capturing it it's not recording it though so we need to set that that it actually records it after this and if we press q you see that it actually goes away so that's working we can quit it we can start it and we need to change the color for sure but that's about it change the color and make sure we can record with it now right here for us to change the color so we actually get the right color we need to change the color to rgb as i said earlier so let me just put the comment we'll say convert our image we'll convert image.mp to rgb color yep 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 really excited about this so what we need to do next is we just write right here we'll call it color image color underscore image and we'll set it equal to cv2 dot cv cvt color and inside here we'll put image np and after that we'll say cv we'll set the color we want it to actually be like and the color is going to be this is all capital it's rgb so it's this right here we click on that and now we need to change this from image np to actually to color image now let's see if that actually works let's go back to the browser here and see if it gets the right color and we can see we have the right color right now so that's working out perfectly but we're not recording and there's this the whole point of this is that we can record press q to actually finish it cancel it or quit and or close anyone you want to use but yes now we need to actually make sure we can record and save our recording so that's the next part we need to do
Now what we need to do next is we can comment this out right here because we don't need to print it anymore. I just wanted to show you. But yeah, what we need to do next is we need to be able to dynamically save the name of our file. So our MP MP4 files, we need to be able to save it and make sure that if you add to the recording, maybe you want to make five recordings that that actually gives them new names. And the way we'll do that is every new recording will have a new time because it's impossible to have two recordings that are on the same time. So that's the whole logic of this. Now I'll put a comment right here. Now, how do we do this? We'll say time underscore timestamp. You can just call it with a camera notation. Timestamp is equal to create our variable timestamp is equal to date time. So this is why we imported date time dot date time dot now. So that's what I mean by you can't have two recordings with the same time. So that's what we're taking now. So every time you make a recording, the file will be saved with the current date and also the current time. So let me show how you do that. You say start time and we'll say we'll start with the year. Because as I said earlier, you can't have a recording with the same year, the same, the same month and the same day. the same day and also you can create a space it can't be the same hour it can't also be the same minute and it cannot it can never be the same second so that's why we're doing it like that and after that we'll call we'll create a variable called record record name And we'll set record name to, we'll use our string literal. With the curly brackets, timestamp dot mp4, because we need to add this mp4 so the computer knows it's an mp4, basically. Now that we've done this, what we can now do is we can pass the information from our video to the file and We'll be able to, we'll need to add the encoding, we'll need to add the frame rates and also need to add the width and the height. Because it needs to have all this to actually save it correctly. And for it to be a legit video, because if you don't do all this, you might get an error where it shows you that, oh, this MP4 cannot be played because it doesn't support all the necessary requirements that the MP4 should have. So say video writer. So video writer and then we'll say record. We'll put here record name dot mp4. And then we'll put our four character because that's the encoding. And we'll put the frame rates 10.0. You can play with the frame rates and see the differences. But for me, I think 10 is the best. 20 is a little bit too fast. And also height. Yeah, I should have a comma right here. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to call captured. We're going to call captured video to write the converted image, which is our colored image. So we'll say captured video dot write and then we'll put here color image. Now we should be able to run it. Now we can screen our screen recording is working. We can see it right here it's recording this. It's recording live score. We can even go somewhere else. It's recording Google too. And now we click on Q. So we quit it. We need to check. We need to check if it actually recorded it. And we can see the video right here. We right click on open or show in Explorer. Now we click on the video. Now you can see we have our recording right here. 
recording everything we did so yeah guys that's it for this tutorial hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like subscribe to the channel guys it really helps me out with the youtube algorithm and you know what i'm gonna wrap this up and i'll see you all in the next youtube video